welcome to season 5, episode 2. And of the Design for Victory podcast. I want to come on here. I'm, I'm actually recording this the night before, but I want to come on here and do a beginning segment for, uh, at the, like I said at the time I'm recording this, it is uh, February 1st. On January first, excuse me. And uh, there's at least there's, I think there's one thing I need to clear up. And and then and I'm also gonna pray. I'll pray again when I when I preach. I'm sure, but I'm also gonna pray over the message. Um. So one thing I found out. Um, I don't know if he still has this facility there or not, but to my knowledge, uh, Jeremiah Johnson's ministry had a facility in Lakeland, Florida. But now they've now the the facility that they did this prophetic word on tonight, or that they mentioned, is in North Carolina. So they are also, at least based out of our region, uh, like he's more itinerant. But the the head like the altar global is based out of our region. So, but what I want to do, what I want to clear up is. Uh, the false gospel statement that I made. In the previous podcast. Um, I was really zealous. And I said something to the effect of you know about casually. Just throwing around, you know, about false gospels, uh, which I I think in that instance he may have done that. At least that's what it looked like on that short, and that's what I felt like. You know, the Lord, you know. Anyway, there were, were reasons that the Lord wanted me to mention that hey, that statement was condemned. That that did something. That because you know I asked the Holy Spirit later on you know should I have said that he said yeah but I want to come on here and just say that um, we all now there there is something that I want to pray as well because you know I used to be real confrontational like that there's nothing wrong with hard preaching. Like, you know, preaching the hard truth. But I used to be really confrontational like that. So there's two things that I'm going to do when I pray. Um, and the other thing, too, you know, when I said I'm going to pray this out of respect for Ellen Didio, what I meant was out of respect for them and because I want their church to succeed. I want to kind of clear that up. But... You know, for those that listened to the previous podcast, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I did a, a podcast called Vision Statement and Prayer Meeting for 2024. And, you know, I encourage you to go listen to that. Other than that, um, well, that's about it. But, Father, I thank you for this message that you've given me, Lord. And it's actually similar to what you gave your servant Jeremiah Johnson concerning 2024, the Valley of Decision. And you actually spoke to my heart that you are fighting against Jezebel. You are evicting Jezebel from your church. And this was actually confirmed to me through the word which you gave Jeremiah Johnson in regards to women in ministry, women uh, being promoted to certain prominent positions and things in their nations, and there being Esthers and Deborahs being raised up, and men that are needing to stand alongside these women and be the Mordecais of our day, 
to help these women to, to do what you've called them to do, Lord. And so I thank you for that. I thank you for that com- confirming word which you've given me through this, through him. Um, and Father, I thank you. Lord, we partner, we, and I ask that this would be added to the injunction that, that I, that we did at the time I'm recording this today on the previous podcast excuse me and also Lord I do this believing that what you what, what you had me speak was true and accurate or and was something that you wanted me to say Uh, however you'd say that, but also an intercession and an agreement with the people to, you know, believing that, that you will help his ministry along. In this regard, Lord, I ask that the courts would rem- re- remember the times when I was confrontational. Um, in in preaching similarly. And with that in mind, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of Antichrist that would blind his eyes, that would keep him from preaching these, these these amazing prophetic words in the way that you, Holy Spirit, would want him to. That's what happened with me and probably with a lot of other people. And Father, I, I just declare, as you stated at one time, the spirit of Antichrist will not be able to stand in this next revival. So I thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. I wanted to do that because, um, I mean, amen. I wanted to do that, folks, because when I was listening to the sermon today, screen recording, I thought, wait a minute. And, you know, you say something and you think, well, that was slanderous. That was not respectful of the person. And I think what happens, and we've got to be careful of this, we get so zealous about the thing. This This happens to me sometimes, and so, you know... That's why we've got to be real careful. We get so zealous about a certain thing. And then, and then I'll say it this way for a second. The enemy takes over. Because then we start slandering somebody. And so I wouldn't say this is, as some people would call it, damage control. I would call it authenticity or just honesty that yeah I made a mistake and so thank you all very much yeah I was I I thought well yeah um Thank you all very much for listening to this podcast. And um, I'll see you in the next segment.
Father, I thank you for the song that was introduced to us tonight by Joseph Larson, you know, the, the, the guy that sang it, that said that you made us whole, Lord, that you, you died that we may be healed and whole, and I can't remember the exact wording of it, but Father, I thank you for this day, I thank you for the word of God, Lord, you've given me, and that you've given to your servants, um, the prophets, Father God, I thank you for the series that you're leading Apostle Tim Sheets to, to minister on. And he, he ministered the foundation of it this Sunday on this sermon called Godhead Sur Surprises. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. As you've spoken to me and, and even others in similar ways, this is, uh, you know, or at least as you've spoken to me uh, this Sunday when I listened to the first part of that, you said that the part of this campaign, this new campaign, the campaign that the Holy Spirit is going on for Jesus Christ to advance the kingdom of God is the part concerning the fear of the Lord. As I prayed last night in the previous segment, Father, I thank you, Lord, for that we are partnering with Jeremiah Johnson Ministries and and the, and the anointing, the prophetic anointing that you've given them, Father. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this sermon is in some ways similar. I mean, it's it's going to be a, a continuation of the seven levels of the anointing series. But it's a prophetic word. 2024, a year to fear the Lord. Turn with me to, to Psalms 23, and 24, excuse me, Psalms 24, verses 3 to 10. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Salah. Now turn with me to the book of Zechariah, chapter 3. Zechariah, chapter 3. And we're going to read it, verses 1 through 7. Um, also in this passage, you know, I want you to, for homework, I want you to compare 20, uh, Psalms 24, verses 3 to 10, to Isaiah 35, verses 1 to 10. Uh, it is the highway of holiness. Uh, Prophet Charlie Shamp, uh, Prophet Jeremiah Johnson, I think there's another one, but... Just I know there's two prophets that I know of that the Lord has highlighted this to them. And and I felt the Lord leading me to say, I want you to use this verse for the sermon. Um, I felt like he was leading me to do that last night. To, to say, you know, because this is prophetic for this year. Um, now Zechariah 3 verses 1 to 7 says, Then he showed me... Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him and the Lord said to Satan the, the Lord rebuke you Satan the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem re rebuke you is this not a, bland, a brand plucked from the fire now tonight as I was preaching this the Lord gave a call from heaven and the call was, we need, as ministers of the gospel, we have got to, to 
uh, start preaching about the coming of the bride and about the, the uh, parable. And in fact, we're going to stop there and, and I'm going to read to you one of the parables that we are to preach about. We are to, 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 to um, and I can feel that call. Actually, no, we'll, we'll continue on with this, this verse. Uh, but I can feel the call again, even as I speak now, that there are going to be, you know, the Lord led Jeremiah Johnson to prophesy last night, or shall I say, as he was praying and fasting and preparing for last night, the Lord had spoken to him that there were going to be lyrics, and, you know, the uh, the prophetic word that he released last night is is a 35 minute long video, and it's called 2024. The Valley of Decision. Um, and he spoke about how there are going to be musicians, worshipers, that are going to be heralding the return of the Lord um, through their music. And the Lord is giving a similar call to those that are ministers that we've got to start, when the Holy Spirit leads us, we've got to start heralding the, the return of the Lord and the cleansing of the bride. The cleansing of the bride. Um, you know, to put on, put, to, to put on, ask the Lord for new garments. Verse 3, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel of the Lord. Then he answered and spoke, to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from from him. And to him he said, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his on his head, and they uh, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. Turn with me now to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 14, all the way to verse 22, and it says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot, so then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be re revealed, and anoint your, your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Now I hear a call from heaven also. There are many leaders that are, that, that may, I'm just going to release this into the spirit realm. Because I know there's probably going to be lots of people that don't listen to this right off. But, so that the Lord, or I'll just say, that I'll just release this. The call from heaven is, the Lord is asking, is, is pleading with whether you're a church leader or whoever you are, and you've got hidden sin in your heart. He is saying, buy gold refined in the fire. Buy gold from me refined in the fire. Put on, you know, get eye salve so that you can see. And he continues in verse 19, it says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him 
excuse me, and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, <clears throat> we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we're, I'm going to begin, we're going to um, come back to another segment. And what I want to do in this next segment is we're going to look at some parables. What is the Lord saying right now in regards to the Bride of Christ? Um, you know, what are, what are some of these parables I, that I believe are interwoven into these scriptures about clean, you know, garments and things like that? Actually, let's just let's just do it right now. We're gonna go to back, we're gonna go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. And these are t tonight. One of these is a is a parable that I referenced at church, but I thought I'd go over these with you. Matthew twenty. Let's go to Matthew 22, verses 9 to 11. Actually, let's see. 22, actually start at verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. He sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Woo! Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute. Verse 9. Uh, verse 8. I had a dream one time. Let me... Look for it real quick. And... There we go. This was written down. I wrote this down. Um, I had when I had woken up on May nineteenth, May twenty first of two thousand nineteen, and here's what I wrote. Last night I had a dream that an awakening angel came to me. This angel was blue. At least in this dream, um, I believe that if if I were to read <laughs> the, I, I think I think blue has to do with. Uh, government anyway uh in this dream this angel was blue and he could fit in the palm of my hand he didn't radiate any light from him like you'd expect from an angel i asked him what kind of angel are you he said an awakening angel next the voice that uh, this is what i wrote next the voice that gave me the message didn't sound like his so i don't know if he gave me the message but i heard heed the sound of the trumpet heed the sound of the trumpet and it's in the other two dreams that I had were in regards to simply just me telling others about the dream. But, I hear the call now. Heed the sound of the trumpet. Heed the sound of the trumpet. The trumpet represents the watchman. The trumpet represents the minister who is heralding the call for the bride of Christ to make herself ready for the coming of the, of the bridegroom.
Now, verse 9. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. I believe this is representative of evangelism. Verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways. Am I going to be, anyway, too much into it. So the servants went into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming! Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went, in, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. This is sobering because notice they said, Lord, Lord, open to us. And, this, and, and I want you to study Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. Compare this to Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. Now, this is concerning the cleansing of the bride. This is what, what, what is going to take place this year. This is some of the stuff that's going to happen. Now, the final verse in regards to, you know, the bride and things like that. I want you to turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, and it says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have preserved and have patience, and persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become more weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. Now, as to the severity of this, there are two scriptures we're going to look at. 
going to begin at the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 1 to... No. Sorry. Let's go to Leviticus, chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. Now, these are our final two scriptures that we're going to look at today. Leviticus, chapter 2, uh, chapter 10, verses 1 to 3, and it says... Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. There's a place in the book of Ezekiel chapter 44. Where it records that the priests are to discern from the holy from the profane. This year is the year that the, pre, that the, the, the ministers, the fivefold ministers... Are to help are to help the people of God to discern the the holy from the profane. Now I want to make a, I want to clear something up. We as fivefold ministers are to equip the pe the people of God for the work of ministry. But I be, I don't believe our sole our sole um, job is to simply teach people how to cast out demons and heal the sick and do signs and wonders. I don't believe that is our sole job. Our another part of our job is found in the book in the Old Testament about the priests. The priests taught taught the people the law of God. The priests taught the people the word of God. The Levites did. Um, you know, there's one place I think in Nehemiah where it talks about how the how the Levites would stand up day and night reading the people the word of God and the people would weep. And Nehemiah sa said. Uh, do not weep, for this is a day of, of celebration, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's just one place, and, Ezra, and the book of Ezra records another aspect of this. And so this is the year where we are to herald the coming of the Lord. We are to help the people of God to understand the difference in the holy and the profane. Hyper grace is not going to cut it. And... Acts chapter 5. Let me just say this. Not one jot nor tittle is to be is to be missing from the lips of the minister of God. What I mean by that is you can't downplay. You know, a minister, I heard a minister today, uh, Bishop Alan Didio, um, Talk about the tithe, and he said that the what the question of tithing comes down to obedience. God, you know, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and He doesn't need anything from us. But the reason He asks us to tithe is because unrighteous mammon is already cursed and he wants to lift that curse and that's how he does it is through tithing and i'm not going to belabor that point but that's just one of many points um drunkenness i've heard people say well we're free and so a little bit of wine ain't gonna ain't gonna hurt if you say that on your live stream there are people who are who were addicts and who are attempting to, to get free from that lifestyle that are gonna hear that and they're gonna go, Oh, okay. I'm free. I you know, I'm I'm under the blood and so I can just drink all I want to. And that's you're gonna be held accountable before God for that. And so anyway, I'm I'm not gonna belabor that. But I want you to really capitalize. I want you to really study these scriptures here. Here's the final scripture. Acts 5 verses 1 to 11. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. 
and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why, has this, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him in, or carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last, and the young men came in and found her dead and, car uh, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon those who heard these things. And actually we've got, uh, there's a scripture the Holy Spirit has, come, has brought to, to mind uh, that I have not visited in a long time. And we're going to read this chapter together. It's going to be Joshua 7. Joshua chapter 7. And this is the story of Achan. Um, there we go. This will be our final scripture and then I'm going to pray. This is a, a longer version of what I of uh, of what I preach tonight. Joshua seven. Uh, all right, verse one. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things, for Achan the son of Carmi, the son of Zebedee, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth-Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai. There are times when we are going to hear teachings from Apostle Tim Sheets and them, and then, and then attempt to to um, abide by those teachings, and then boom, we're going to get hit with the enemy. And it's going to be because we, I'm talking about whoever it could be, it, it could be anyone listening under the sound of my voice. The the, the it, you get hit with backlash, or you get hit with defeat. Uh, and it's because there are accursed things that you have allowed. That you that you have kept back from from if you will from the plundering, or you know. Anyway, and they returned. This is a verse three. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, "Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people there, for for there, the people of Ai are few." So about 3,000 men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebarim, and struck them down on the, on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. He and the elders of Israel. 
and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content, content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you any more unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to families. And the family which the Lord takes shall come to, to households. And the household which the Lord takes shall, uh, shall come man to man. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi, Zabdi was taken. Then he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, Give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of of gold weighing fifty shekels, I coveted them and took them, and there they are, hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent, with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent, with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, and, took Achan the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Then they raised over him a great heap of stones, still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. 
Therefore, the name of that place has been called the Valley of Acor to this day. Now, nobody's going to get stoned with stones. That's not how this is going to apply here. But here's the, the call that the Lord, that I feel the Lord leading me to, to give. Um, you know, I was debating on if I should involve y'all on in this or if, if we should. But Sunday, I was made aware uh, when I was listening to Oasis Church that next Sunday, they're going to begin a fast. And it's a 21-day fast, and and the way what they're gonna do is t save money, and then take up an offering, and give to the poor. On I think what he said was on January second, I mean February second, which is when uh, the the prophetic summit happens. But. I felt like the Lord was saying, "We prepare for the prophetic summit by prayer, by fasting, by sanctifying yourselves, by consecrating yourselves unto the Lord, because there is sin in His camp. There is, the Lord is saying, there is sin in my camp, and you will not be able to take back your nation as an inheritance until Jesus Christ." Unless you remove the accursed thing from among you. You will lose every time. That is what I hear the Lord saying in this in this hour. And. Another passage. That we may look at next week. Or sometime in the future. But I would, I would encourage you to, to look at it for homework. Is Deuteronomy 28. The curses. Blessings and curses. What will God do if I obey Him? What will God do if I don't? And another thing is deliverance. I would encourage you to get deliverance. And, and those of you that believe in and, and teach and study the courts of heaven, you probably need to be there quite a bit. If you haven't already been cleaning house spiritually in your own life, dealing with generational sins and things, you need to do that. Um, and you may need to amp up doing that. Um, depending on what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. But we've got to consecrate ourselves. We've got to sanctify ourselves unto the Lord. And I want to pray with you today. Um, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do similar to what I did at church. And now what I want you to do is <clears throat> I'm gonna say a prayer for you, but at the same time, I want you either in your mind or maybe quietly, whatever, in just in your own way, I want you to 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 say to be in a state of prayer, and and whatever it is that the Holy Spirit, um, uh, or what you could do, you know, listening on the podcast, you could just. Um, well, no, we'll, we'll do it this way, unless the Spirit tells you different. Just, I want you to, to pray with me. Um, pray the prayer, whatever this is the Holy Spirit is convicting you of. Okay? And that's, that's my encouragement as I pray. And we're going to end this a little bit different. Now, if you feel like, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this too. I don't usually do this. If you feel like this message has blessed you, uh, if you want to partner with Preach Unto Them Jesus with our ministry, uh, you can go to www.stormministries.com. www.stormministries.com. And then there's the Help Our Cause. Um, all donations that are given. Go to the Homeless Alliance and to our church, to the furtherance of the gospel. Um, but I thought I would give you an opportunity uh, to give into this ministry and into the work that the Lord is doing through us. Also, they've got uh, Pastor Mickey has a contact link there on his website, and you can just contact him directly if you'd like, or 
you can go to www.kingdomadvance, uh, K-I-N-G-D-O-M-A-D-V-A-N-C-E, dot family, dot blog. Go to the primary menu and hit About Us page, and that's the page that I read from on the previous podcast. And on the bottom, it'll have a heading that says Contact Information, and then it's got a paragraph that details all the places, except for that phone number there, uh, all the places that you can contact us or get a hold of us. Also, let us know, let us know where you're watching from. Now, I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for the word once again. I ask that you would confirm your word that as I'm praying uh, for your people, Father God, that, that you, you would confirm your word, you would lead us to repentance, Father God, that this would be a time of prayer and of fasting. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I feel from the Lord to say this, those of you that are fasting, you know, there's some people that say, well, a biblical fast is just no food. But, you know, if you're like me, I take medicine to where you you can't just not eat all day long. So, if that's the case, you can you can fast one meal a day or um, maybe fast TV. Uh, or just something that's something else that's real hard for you to get away from at other times. And substitute that with prayer. Uh, you gotta you got to add prayer with fasting, though. Or it's not fasting. It's just losing weight. But, <laughs> you know, whatever time you're watching TV or whatever you're usually doing. Or eating lunch or whatever it is that you're fasting. Uh, spend that time in prayer. Alright. Um, and so, I, also... Further resources, a good resource is uh, Pastor Vlad Savchuk. Uh, just type in pa- uh, Vlad Savchuk, S-A-V-C-H-U-K, on fasting. You can type that up on YouTube and you'll get lots of of um, information, lots of teaching on that. Also, Francis Miles is doing a 10-day fast right now called the 10 Days of All Fast. And he's, uh, he's teaching on fasting, so there's another resource that you can you can check out. Um, they just did day one today, but you can, you can check them out and, um, yeah. So Father, I just, I just, um, thank you, Lord, for the sobering word for this year. I ask that you would send, use your, or that by the messenger angels, you would send this word across the ecclesias and father also i thank you for this series that apostle tim sheets is doing i thank you for the word of god which you are giving him and the way that you are having him expound on these methods these teachings and on on the prophetic words that you are giving him And Father, I thank you that even this word is being carried to Oasis Church. The word which you are heralding in this hour is being carried even to Oasis Church, Lord. The most unlikely of churches that may mostly mostly preach hope The Lord says, they will begin to preach sobering messages. And it's not an option. That's what I heard him say. So, Father, I thank you for all of this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, thank you all very much for listening to this podcast. And uh, I hope that this has blessed you. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, um, or if you're on Rumble, you can follow us there. There's actually a place below the video where you can follow us. Um, that's what I like. That's what I like about Rumble. Is anyway, um, and then on the podcast, 
uh, like, comment below, uh, share, rate the show. I don't know if you can give reviews, but and and just um, let let us know. You know, sure that anyway. <clears throat> Thank you all very much for listening, and we will see you, if I don't see you before, I'll see you Sunday. God bless.